Welcome. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve and graph this compound inequality with the OR statement. So what I have is 3 plus m is greater than or equal to 5, or 5m minus 4 is less than negative 34. So the OR statement says that this inequality is true if it's true for this statement, or true for this statement, or both statements. So for any value, for one, equation, one inequality, the other inequality, or both of them. So to solve a graph, what we're going to do is we're going to solve each one separately, and then we're going to graph on the same number line. So all you need them to do is solve for your variables. So on this side, I'm simply just going to subtract 3 to the other side to isolate my m. And therefore, I have m is greater than or equal to, not 5, but 5 minus 3, which is thus. Then over here, I isolate my m by using my inverse operation. So I have 5m minus 4. The first inverse operation I use is add, f add 4 to both sides by addition property of equality. So therefore, I have 5m is less than a negative 30. Divide by 5, and I have m is less than negative 6. So therefore, my two statements of I have all values that are going to be true if I have a value that's greater than 2, or a value that's less than or equal to 6, or greater than or equal to 2. So, first of all, we know that our inequality can be true if it's equal to 2, or if it's, no, I'm sorry, not equal to negative 6, just has to be less than negative 6. So let's, um, let's do 0 here. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Of course, it's negative. Let's get a little bit farther. OK. So we said that our inequality can be true for values that are greater than or equal to 2. So when it's saying it's equal to, that means that 2, that's a part of our function. But since m is not equal to um, negative 6, we're going to leave it as an open circle. Because if you plugged in negative 6 is less than negative 6, that's not a true statement, right? Negative 6 is not less than negative 6. Negative 6 is equal to negative 6. So set, therefore, since negative 6 is not evaluated for that function, we're going to leave it as an open circle. All right. Now, there's a couple of like, really easy ways you can kind of graph this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of pick test points. Um, because to graph. You could always just kind of say aloud, and I think this you know, kind of speaks for itself. It says m is greater than or equal to 2. We know it's equal to, but all values that are greater than 2. Well, obviously, the greater values are going to go in the positive direction. You can see I get to 3, to 4, to 5. Those are all numbers that are greater than 2. Less than, less than is going to be to the left. But what I like to do is just pick a test point. And if your test point, let's do 0. If your test point is true, you shade towards your test point. If it's false, you shade away. So is 0 greater than or equal to 2? No, that's false. Therefore, this test point for this inequality is false. So I'm going to shade away. Now we go over and look to negative 6. It says m is less than negative 6. That means all numbers that are less than negative 6. Well, that's going to be negative 7, negative 8, negative 9, all values to the left. But again, it's always nice to test your work by doing a test point. So let's pick the other, let's pick 0 again. So if I test my graph for 0, I say 0 is less than negative 6. And that's incorrect. That's false as well. So since it's false for this equation, instead of graphing towards my test point, I'm going to graph away. So therefore, this compound statement is true when, for all values that are less than negative 6 or greater than 2 or equal to 2. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you solve and graph a compound inequality. Thanks.